Middleweight champion Gene Fulmer was the very definition of an aggressive brawler. In fact, he was so good that he managed to take the title from Sugar Ray Robinson, a slick, graceful boxer who most consider the pound for pound greatest of all time. The two met in the ring on four occasions, with Fulmer losing once, drawing once, and beating Robinson twice. Fulmer's unorthodox tactics frustrated Robinson to no end. Put simply, Fulmer used techniques that just shouldn't work. And the most bizarre, most impactful tactic by far, was Fulmer's use of the reverse crossguard. The regular crossguard is already exceedingly rare, but Fulmer implemented an even more unusual tactic, reversing his arms to rest his lead arm on top. Fulmer did use this guard defensively well against the ropes. His true success came from using his lead high cross block to set up his relentless offense. This strange block worked so well for Fulmer because it was multi-purpose. It could defend against straights, hooks, and uppercuts. In the same way Norton and Frazier's crossguard frustrated Ali, Fulmer's reverse crossguard frustrated Robinson. The crossguard takes away angles that nuanced jab and movers like to use. These fighters like to sneak punches into the small openings in their opponent's guard. But with Fulmer's head protected on both sides, these angles became far less pertinent. In this clip, Robinson's lead hook is rendered ineffective by Fulmer's cross block, and Fulmer takes full advantage of the opening Robinson's punch has created. A big downside of this lead high cross block would seem to be that the fighter using it takes away their own jab. However, Fulmer adjusted his jab mechanics to throw a truly bizarre, but highly effective jab right off of his cross block. This jab swatted down and away, at times raking across an opponent's face like a hammer fist, and at times swatting down from overhead. If an opponent moved inside to avoid his strange jab, they would often find that Fulmer had just walked them into a looping right. Using this setup, Fulmer managed to hit skilled boxers clean in the jaw with big, telegraphed punches. But Fulmer's body shots had an even greater impact. While they could lead to knockouts, they worked best to sap an opponent's strength limiting their movement, and wearing them down over rounds. This setup blended nicely into the mechanics of Fulmer's overhand, one of his prime weapons for closing distance. Fulmer threw his overhand with the full weight of his body behind it, much like a pitcher throwing a baseball. He tended to shift forward as he did so, which helped him to cover massive distance. Apart from his jab, Fulmer could get away with these wild overhands because he used his lead cross block like a shield, waiting in to counter with his right. What's more, the chainsaw revving like motion of pulling back his lead cross block acted as a force couple, adding even more power to the punch. Fulmer's constant in and out footwork and head feints were also made possible by the additional safety provided by his lead cross guard. These feints not only eased his entry into exchanges, they also acted as bait, drawing punches for Fulmer to counter. Fulmer used these tactics to move in deep either attacking or dipping underneath punches to safely close the distance. Once at close range, he would tie up one arm and pummel away with the other. Fulmer was a master infighter and could seamlessly change which hand was punching and which was holding. He would switch hands to shut down opponents' punches if they tried to fight back or to create new offensive opportunities if an opponent happened to be vulnerable on the other side. It was also a good way to keep the action going so that the ref didn't break up the clinch. Fulmer was a big fan of using his head, literally. Notice in this clip how Fulmer keeps his head underneath Robinson's, denying Robinson's attempt to hide his chin in the crevice of Fulmer's shoulder. By keeping Robinson upright, Fulmer could swing his arm around to connect with his exposed temple. This kept the punch legal, and avoided getting called for rabbit punching the back of Robinson's head. Here Triple G demonstrates the same technique over half a century later. In truth, Fulmer didn't need much space to pull these punches off. He was so adept at keeping his punches legal that he would at times swing his arm behind his own head to make sure he caught Robinson clean. Gene Fulmer is a great example of a fighter who combined non-traditional techniques with solid fundamentals and strategies. He's a testament to the fact that a brawling, swarming boxer does not have to mean a stupid boxer. 
and that reckless, wild punches can work well when supplemented with solid rhythm, feints, and defense. I would recommend watching all four of his fights against Robinson. If you'd like to learn more, you can check out my books on footwork, power, and defense. Make sure to catch my weekly podcast with Roy Foreman, The Punch You Did Not See, all linked below. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Christian, wishing you happy training.